Hey everybody, Todd Woodbridge here. Welcome to the AO Countdown. Now, in our preview show, I brought on a guest, Bethany Maddox-Sands, and it now turns out she was so good, she's now my co-host. She's back, Bethany, how are we doing? Todd, I'm here to stay. Listen, I got a couple more days in quarantine, but a lot is happening over here at the Hyatt. I'm talking a little bit with Vika Azarenka. She had a great conversation, opening up, up about her journey, chatting a little bit about how she's getting ready, how she changed her mentality going into this year's Australian Open. But I'm also putting you guys through a little sand sweat studio session and showing how, you how I'm staying fit. So just saying, you can do a lot in a room. But what, what do you got going on, Todd? Can't wait to watch that. Um, well, I'm speaking to the defending Australian Open champion and it's Sophia Cannon. Jim Courier's on as well because he's going to walk us through how he plans all of those amazing on-court interviews that he does. But I've also caught up with Simona Hallett. Simona, thanks so much for joining us. Um, we're looking forward to the AO getting underway. But firstly, obviously everybody's been in quarantine. How are you coping with it? Yeah, it's not easy because uh, we have to stay only in the room and we have just four hours gap to go to the courts and uh, to train. Uh, I never train more than two hours. So uh, I use the two hours of uh, tennis, practice tennis, and uh, then I come back and I enjoy the room. Let's talk a little bit about 2020 because although it was such a strange year, in a way for you, it, it, it was a, quite a good year. You only played five tournaments, but you won three of them. Well, I started very well here in Australia. Uh, I played the, that semis and I was very close to win it. So uh, I got the confidence that it's going to be a good year, actually. Uh, then I went to Dubai and I won the tournament, even if I was a little bit injured and I got extra confidence. But then the pandemic came and uh, we had to switch off everything. I'm going to do a little quiz with you um, and I'm going to ask you how well do you know your coach, Darren Kale? What was his highest singles ranking? Uh, 22. <laughs> ATP. Tick. Well, oh, she's going to be good at this. How many singles titles did he win? I don't want to be wrong because then he will be upset. Can you tell me the measure? <laughs> Three. Three, well done. <laughs> Which and what is his best Grand Slam result? Yeah, he is open semi final. Well done, 1988. Now, did he ever make you pay for all the negative comments on court? He said, okay, uh, you are allowed to do anything you want on court, and every for every negative comment, you have to pay, I don't know, 200 euros, 200 dollars, or something like that. And I said, okay. I felt for first time very free on court. <laughs> free that I can do anything I want. <laughs> Even if I have to pay, I did. I did feel very well. Simona, you have been legendary. Thanks so much uh, for coming on. Uh, we wish you well when you get to Melbourne Park in the Australian Open. And thanks for having some fun with us today. Thank you too. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Like my lighting, so I don't look like a ghost. Is it just the window? Okay, hold on, let me try to, to maybe change it. What about here? This is too dark. Wait, hold I on, let me try honest. something else. better. I think better. Yeah, now you, you have a little bit more of a tan now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you just been styling your hair for your photos, or is that just like you wake up and your hair looks like that? Honestly, this is me not brushing it. So I woke up like this with, with like two braids that I did yesterday and that's kind of it, so. Cause your Insta post looked awesome. I was like, wow, she's really working it in this quarantine. You have to like dress up. It's not, it's not the reason not to look good, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We do this for ourselves. I do it for myself always. So it's like, you know, if, if, if like my coach asked me like, why, why, why are you wearing mascara? I said, why do you care? <laughs> not for you. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not for you. This is from. This is all for me. <laughs> yeah, it is. Like you, you, you look good. You feel good, and you know whatever little things that makes you more happy, more satisfied. Do it. The last time I saw you in person was before we boarded our LA flight. So <laughs> when we once we yeah, landed, you didn't even see me on the flight. Like for real. Like people should, I think, understand like how cautious like we were like yeah. I mean a lot of people like I was like I didn't even want to go to the bathroom extra time like I was just like 
put everything like I put the, the, <laughs> like a blanket all over when I was on top of me that I was sleeping in case like my mask moves or something. You and I are, are one of uh, or two of the few players that ended up doing the hard quarantine. How did you kind of turn around from getting that email uh, that you were going to be in hard lockdown for 14 days to kind of changing your attitude? I had a, like a group call with my agent and my coach and stuff. And I, I literally, I, 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 got, I hung up on them and they're like, and I could hear like, Oh, did Vika just hang up? And I, and I was like, yeah, I just hung up. Cause I was so devastated at first I cried. Like I, I cried on the couch and I felt that, you know, like as everybody like frustration sadness and like I was like oh my god I worked so hard what is it, where is it gonna go like a feeling of uncertainty and then I I kind of thought like okay you feel all those emotions this is what's gonna happen you just gotta let yourself feel them and and get them out. Craig Tiley and AO they did an amazing job I mean we have uh daily meetings with them and they're really doing their best to kind of meet our needs what they can do uh with us in our rooms and, and to help us adjust uh, for once we do get out. You know, it's been like 10, 11 days, but I'm surprised like how neutral I feel at the moment. So it's, it's, it's been good. Let's talk a little bit about your podcast. You just made this announcement that you were releasing this later this month. Just give us a little tease on what we can look forward to when we're listening to this. Honestly, this journey with the show and how it came about, um, it's been so fun and it, it's, it was transformational for me because my idea of the show was for myself to go on the learning journey as well as taking my audience on the learning journey. And then through that, you kind of learn, you, you let go of your um, things that maybe I used to hold on to and I, and I talk about them. Vika, thanks again for this little chat. Really appreciate you answering the questions and uh, I'm super excited for your podcast to drop. And let's get after AO 2021. Let's do this. Yeah, make sure Justin comes out healthy out of that quarantine because I see you guys doing some some pretty impressive tricks there with the workouts. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm keeping him motivated too. We're doing our couples workouts. Uh, I, I got to figure out the next move for tomorrow, but uh, I feel like we're both uh, going to come out of this stronger. <laughs> All right. Well, that's good. Thanks, Vika. Hey, Jim. Thanks uh, for joining us in quarantine. Um, we're going to have a little bit of chat about um, not not so much what you did on the court, because we, we know you're world number one, won a couple of Australian Opens, a couple of French Opens, but somehow you managed to become one of the very, and I say somehow, I know how, but the very best broadcasters in the game. Did you ever think that that was going to be your post-playing journey? Well, that's very generous of you, Todd. It's uh, my broadcasting, I think, is still very much a work in progress. How do you go about... Um, getting the best out of the place because I don't think there's ever been a, a, an interviewer in our sport that's got such enjoyment and such variation out of those interviews mm. and those players. No, you're, you're too kind, Todd. I, I know true. you, it's true. I, but, but you're in, you're in the booth with me. You know yeah. that I'm stressing over the entire yeah. match. You know that I'm scribbling down various notes at all times, trying to think about how to navigate what you know, because you do it as well. It is a, a tightrope. Um, it's you're out in the court with the player and anything can happen. It is live and, and mistakes are the ones that people remember more than, than yeah. kind of the good interviews. So there's always yeah. that danger. Who's been your, your favorite person to interview? Well, the easiest person and the one who set the standard has been Federer because he's so talkative. It takes great physical strength and stamina to do what you do out here and make it look easy. Do you train really hard in the off season? Can you give me any tips, anything you can talk about? Oh, it's all talent, I don't work. I just sit on the couch. <laughs> so you thought you had something going, right? That you were one of those, like with Lendl, that you know, made us generation work hard. Not with me, anyway. I, I didn't get inspired. <laughs> no. <laughs> He's really shown all the other players what those interviews should be as far as how they can present themselves to the fans and draw a connection. How many times do you think you've interviewed you met the Australian Open? Probably more like 50 times. This is kind of nice, the zip up thing here. I mean, how actively involved are you in the fashion, my man? I'm very happy that you actually like it too. It's, it's, it's important for my sleep tonight when I close my eyes. I'll think of Jim approved my look, so it's all good. <laughs>
So how do you come up with something new every time you got to come out to the same person? It's hard. And I would say that uh, having sources inside of his camp that can give you ideas. Social uh, media has also been a, been a boon. Is there an interview that sticks out as um, memorable for uh, good reasons or perhaps for not so good reasons? Yeah, I've got a couple actually. Um, so the first year that I came down here to do Australian TV was 2005, the year that Leighton made that amazing run to the yeah. finals and ended up losing to Marat Safin. Now, Safin beat Federer from match point down in the semifinals, and I interviewed him after that match. And he was, it was a long, long match, and I asked him a question, and he kind of got a little bit flummoxed and didn't have an answer. And I asked him, Do you need a hug or what? Yes, I need some hug. <laughs> and so we <laughs> hugged it out. And then he loosened up, and then everything kind of got better from there. But that one was one of those moments where, like, <laughs> oh, no. This is a big moment interview. He's freezing. What do you do? And and thankfully, I knew him well enough to you know get get close with him. One of my best uh, interviews and most memorable was at the Hopman Cup when I had the opportunity. Uh, I knew it was coming, you know, a weeks in advance, and that was to be able to have Serena and Roger on the same court, having played each other before the tournament started. We were planning how that might look, and that was to get uh, Serena talking about playing Roger and. And then sort of planting the seed about having a potential selfie. And if you remember that, it became one of the iconic photos, yeah. um, really, of, of the sport to have those two champions playing there. But there any of those moments where you got the, that perler because you put so much work into it? Recently, last year, Serena Williams had, and her team had posted video of her and Coco Goff and a couple other players in their training camp in the offseason doing a choreographed dance. She'd won the match and it was one of those matches where it had gone pretty quickly and, and I was able to put it up on the video board and I had and Serena was able to see the video and she was initially embarrassed and then she was giddy and it's it's those moments where the the, the, the warrior facade of the players drops that you're, you're able to see who they are off the court that they don't often show you when they're out there in their body That's armor. Amazing. Those are the magic moments. How I had a chance to dig into the archives at Tennis Australia and go back to the first interview that was ever done post-match after a completed match at Melbourne Park. And I think you might be interested in who it was. I wasn't really thinking about that at the time, so yeah, it's pretty good. You must be happy with the win, though. Oh, very, because you know, I got in as a wild card and, and it's always, you know, that's what you try and do is to try and get your first win and stuff like that. So, and I did that, so it's good. I tell you what, my accent's got a little bit more rounded since then, hasn't it? <laughs> Boy, your voice has deepened a little bit, but you don't look any different, uh, you know, so man, whatever you're doing. Where did you find that? that? I mean, my goodness, caught 10. Uh, hey, the very we, first we dig hard. Match. Oh, that's, 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 a, that's a classic. <laughs> I didn't know that existed. Uh, it's a privilege to be here. Can't wait to sit down next to you, talk a little tennis and watch some history unfold in front of our eyes in Melbourne Park. Good on you, mate. See you soon. Today, I'm gonna to take you through one of my tennis specific movement drills. And this is kind of challenging, obviously. It's we only quarantine have... specific? Yes, because yeah. we only have this much space, but we've made it work, so check it out. Got the team on FaceTime right here. They're there to keep me in I'm check. I'm sitting on the windowsill with the water bottle, so. Yeah. Towel boy, water boy right here. There you go. Hey, you got two minutes to rest. Is that third set? Fourth set? Yes. I got like 75 more sets. That was my first workout of the day. I gotta rest up and go for my second one. I'm just kidding. A G G R E S S I B E aggressive. B B aggressive. There you go. It is huge to have the defending champion with us. Big thank you. How are you doing in quarantine? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm luckily and uh, fortunate to be the, uh, one of the players that are able to practice. So uh, obviously not easy, but I'm obviously grateful to be here. It's got to be pretty cool to come back to your, the home of your first Grand Slam where you're defending. What's that feeling like? It's special. Obviously, I have a lot of memories. Uh, 
So um, it'll be a good test for me, I guess, mentally, for sure, to see how I'll handle, you know, the nerves and I guess the pressure from the outside. I mean, when you look back at 2020, for most people, it was a year that just completely want to forget. But for you, I mean, it was quite an extraordinary year. You start off with a win here in Australia and then uh, you get to the final of the French later in the year as well. So in terms of Grand Slams, um, let's hope that they, they keep getting bigger and better for you. But but what a year. Yeah, in terms of tennis wise, definitely was a, a very good year for me. And uh, yeah, obviously hope uh, it'll be, a, you know, successful Grand Slams because obviously that's where I'm obviously, you know, having my eye on, you know, I'd rather try to do better at the slams. So uh, I hope it's going to, I hope it's going to be like that. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about how you got a nickname named Peter. I don't know. I think that question should be asked to Bethany because she started <laughs> this and then, you know, at the beginning, like it was kind of like funny, like, um, but then like, I'm like, okay, Beth, come on. I'm not breaking Peter, you know? So yeah. But she, she hasn't told me why. How did it come about? It was from some kind of show or a movie. She asked me, I forgot like what it is. I obviously never watched it. I don't know about it. And then I said, no, I don't know that. And then she said, oh, there's like Peter there. So yeah, I don't know exactly which show or movie. So uh, like I said, ask her exactly because uh, my info is not going to be so good. Hey, and what about at the Open last year when um, she did this again? She sort of threw you under the bus a little bit with a bit of social media telling us uh, the whole world that you were buying a new piece of jewelry for every round you won. Okay, what are you purchasing now that you're I, in the finals? I am purchasing um, the Cartier, what's it called? The nail and the love ring. Diamonds? Big time. <laughs> all, all the diamonds. Did you end up buying it? And what did you get after the after the win? I did end up getting like uh, the Cartier uh, bracelet, which I had like on like, the whole year I didn't take it off at all. Like I still have it on right now. It's Sophia Cannon's turn for what she can get in 60 seconds. What did you have for lunch today? Sandwich. How long can you last without your phone? Um, two hours. What is your most used emoji? Uh, kissy face. Talk or text? Talk. Cardio or weights? Wait. Burger or taco? Burger. Mountains or beach? Beach. Night out or night in? Night out. Forehand or backhand? Backhand. Introvert or extrovert? Intro. What would be your last meal on earth? Or your cookie milk treat. Ooh, how do you take your coffee? Uh, with milk. What is the current picture on your phone lock screen? Uh, the Eiffel Tower. Nine plus 11? Nine plus 11, um, 20. Well done. What's your favorite day of the week? Friday. And I've got one more for you. And it's lastly, what is one thing that we may not or don't know about you? <laughs> There's a lot. Okay, um, I guess um, very emotional. Very emotional. You're a champion. And we look forward to you defending your title when you get okay. back out of quarantine. Good on you, Sophia. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, Bethany, I want the truth. What is the actual truth behind the nickname of Peter for Sophia Cannon? Uh, listen, there, there, when we first started playing doubles together, there was a lot of confusion on whether we should call her Sonia or Sophia. So I figured I would just help with that and call her Peter. And that's kind of, that's how it started. And now uh, she hates it, but I know that and I still keep calling her Peter. Well, thank goodness that we've sorted all that out, Bethany. I mean, who knew? She didn't, she had one story, you had a different one, but I tell you what, I look forward to some more stories, more interviews from you in our next show. Thanks for coming on again. Awesome, just wanted to simplify it, but Todd, I'll see you later. Well, that's it for this show. Join us again next time on AO Countdown. It's gonna be another big one.